Hi there, welcome to NetBe Invest. Continuing my theme of looking at 100 interesting stocks, in today's video, which is part six, I'll be featuring and focusing on three small operating miners, and all three mining companies are operational cash flow positive for the half year and also for the quarter. I've decided to focus on these three companies in this video because they are quite diverse in what they do. For instance, one company uh, mines Kalen, which I don't know much about. They also have a few silica projects. Another company is an oil and gas mining company uh, situated in the Gulf of Mexico. And the last company is a company I've featured a couple of times in my videos, and that company mines zinc, gold, copper, lead, and even silver. So the three companies I'll be featuring in this video are Suvo Strategic Minerals. Now, this is a company that mines Kalen. They also have silica projects. All their projects and mines are in Australia. Otto Energy have assets in the Gulf of Mexico, and they actually are quite highly operational cash flow positive, but the only thing against that company is the shares on issue. And New Century Resources. I have actually done dedicated videos on this company in the past. They do mine... Uh, Zinc tailings. They also, I think it's uh, lead and silver. They also have recently acquired a gold and no, could be just copper. Definitely copper uh, project in Tasmania. Spent a fair bit of money and raised a fair bit of cash in regards to that project. The first company I'll be featuring in this video is Suvo Strategic Minerals. Suvo Strategic Minerals do have one Kalen project in production right now. It's called the Pitong. A mine, and it is Australia's only hydrous Kalen plant. And I really like this um, slide that Servo presented in one of their presentations because it goes through the asset, the products, and also the markets. For instance, the products they are mining hydrous Kalen, pharmaceutical Kalen, and meta Kalen. And the markets include paper and packaging, paint, ceramics medicines, cosmetics, green concrete, fertilizers and crop production, and industrial absorbent, including CO2. So the main thing here is they have one mine in production, another mine close to production, or maybe not close to production, but heading that way, that's in Gabon in West Australia. And they also have a couple of silica projects. And those two silica projects are in Western Australia. And the products they want to mine there are high-grade silica and high-purity quartz sand. And the markets they're aiming for are specialty glass, foundry applications, thermal energy storage, solar panels, semiconductors, and silicon metals. So fairly exciting markets that they're aiming for with these silica uh, mines, which they hope to be mining um, well, in the next few years, hopefully, they are expecting to drill in the Muchia, commencing half year 2022, and for the Inaba, I'm horribly pronouncing that. They do have two silica projects in West Australia, and they are the products they're hoping to mine there are high grade silica and high purity quartz sands. And when you look at the markets they're aiming for, some of them are quite exciting, including solar panels and semiconductors, also silicon metals, thermal energy storage, foundry applications, and specialty glass. Now we're just gonna look at Suvo Strategic Metals, statement of cash flows from the half yearly report, receipts of customers in this particular half year, 7.4 million. Unfortunately, payments to suppliers and employees was 7.1 million. So they're only operational cash flow positive by 428,000. And because they spent $712,000 on exploration and valuation, $844,000 on property, plan, and equipment, and $178,000 on mine properties. This company was not free cash flow positive. So that is the next step I want this company to uh, achieve, is to become free cash flow positive. And if they are able to do that, they will be, be able to fund all the exploration and evaluation through the operations of this one mine. They do have $4.4 million of cash, no debt, and their mar current market cap is 46 million, and that's at a share price of eight cents. One negative thing about Suvo Strategic Minerals is just a bit of a negative sentiment in regards to the company right now, and we have seen 
the share price move into a downtrend over the past six months. If we look at the period between about 2020, so about August of that year, and that's I think when they acquired this particular mine that's in production. So we go from that period all the way to the middle of 2021. The share price of Suvo Strategic Minerals was in an uptrend and the share price rose from about four cents all the way to a high of 24 cents, which was reached in the end of May or near the end of May in last year. But since that high, the share price has been tumbling and it's fallen about 67% from 24 cents to the current share price of 8 cents. So the biggest negative thing about Suvo Strategic Minerals is their share price right now. It's in a downtrend. And the other thing I'd like to see this company achieve is being a free cash flow positive. If they are able to become free cash flow positive on a consistent basis, I do think uh, valuations in the $40 million range would be good value for this particular company, particularly because the markets they are aiming for are fairly exciting markets, a broad range of markets as well. On to Otto Energy, which have, this company has assets in the Gulf of Mexico. They do not control these assets or run the assets. They just have percentage stakes in these particular assets in the Gulf of Mexico. One of the things I did like, but it was not the thing I really liked about Otto Energy was their pillars. They have three pillars. So they have goals, some aims in, in terms of the future of this company. For instance, pillar one is base asset delivery excellence. Pillar two is organic growth within existing base. And pillar three is inorganic growth via opportunity capture to advance in value. For instance, one of the things they've done in pillar three, I'm not sure if this really belongs in this pillar, is they did sell 11 million shares of Pantheon Resources. And that sale um, brought 10.5 million US dollars into the company, but still the company retains 3.3 million dollars of Pantheon shares. But these pillars aren't what got me excited about Otto Energy. It was their half year cash statement. So let's have a look at their half year cash flow statement and you'll be able to see that this company is generating a lot of cash in their operations right now. Because Auto Energy has their assets in the Gulf of Mexico, all their financial numbers are in US dollars. So this is their statement of cash flows from the half year. And there are some things to get excited about Auto Energy, just looking at their statement of cash flows in isolation. Oil and gas sales increased from 10.7 million to 18.5 million. And because some of their costs actually decreased during the last year, this company is highly operational cash flow positive. $9.1 million in the most recent half year, substantial increase from $4.6 million one year ago. Now, the thing you have to take into account is the rising prices of oil and gas over the past year and whether that rise is sustainable in the long term. If you listen to Gregory Marinarino, wherever his name is, he believes the price of oil will get up to like $175 a barrel. I'm not sure if I actually believe that. I think because of of supply and demand, particularly supply will increase because shale producers in the United States will start ramping up production because of the price itself. I think we'll see an increase in supply, which will put out a bit of constraint to the rise of, of price in oil. So that is something to take into account when you are assessing whether Otto Energy is a good buy right now. But they did produce $9.1 million in operating cash flow, $10.5 million in the sale of Pantheon shares, which means the cash on hand for this particular half year increased $15.1 million. And that means cash on hand at the end of the half year was $26.2 million. They also have $7 million of debt. So 15, or what was it? $19 million of net cash. And with a market cap of $76 million at 1.6 cents, it means the enterprise value of Auto Energy is around $57 million. Now, the biggest negative thing about Auto Energy is the shares on issue right now. $4.8 billion of shares on issue. I really don't like to see that amount of shares on issue for a company as small as Auto Energy because you see the share price really low, 1.6 cents. In fact, during the COVID-19 financial panic, the share price of this company fell to 0.4 cents. And when you see the share price fall to those levels, you get a lot of pip traders. And pip traders... Um, take advantage of just a 0.1 cent rise or fall in the share price. And it makes the share price um, rising really difficult. You really see 
the share price of Auto Energy have difficulty rising because of how low the share price is because of those pip traders. And you'll be able to see that when we look at the chart. So actually, let's have a look at the chart right now. And this is the daily chart for Auto Energy just going back to just prior to the COVID-19 financial panic. And just prior to there, the share price of Auto Energy was about 3.4 cents. And it fell from 3.4 cents all the way down to 0.4 cents, which was reached around about March 23rd, the low or the depths of the COVID-19 financial panic. And you can just see how Auto Energy share price has struggled to rise from there. So even though oil prices have gone through the roof, Auto Energy share price has only quadrupled over a two-year period. You just see it slowly going up, and that's because of those pip trades. But right now, the share price is in an uptrend, albeit slowly rising uptrend at 1.6 cents. So there are a few things to dislike about Auto Energy. Shares on issue. Um, the other thing to dislike is whether we will see oil prices continue to rise from here. I'm a little bit dubious about that, but the share price is in an uptrend, and I do think there is a little bit of value with this company at current prices. Last company I'll be looking at in this video is New Century Resources. A couple of, I have done a couple of videos on this company, and the main mine right now that is in production in terms of tailings is Century Mine, and the main um, thing they're mining there is zinc, so mostly tailings, if I remember correctly, also lead and silver. A record September quarter, $31.5 million in EBITDA in that particular quarter. The mine life has been extended to uh, 2030 and beyond. Recently, they made an acquisition, Mount Lyle acquisition, uh, near-term production of green copper assets. They've also did a significant capital raising, uh, raising about $105 million. So a few things going on with this company. And the reason why I like New Century Resources was they were operational cash flow positive. So let's have a look to see if they were still operational cash flow positive in the most recent half year. Let's have a look at New Century Resources consolidated statement of cash flows from their half yearly. And if you just focus on cash flows from operating activities, things are looking up for New Century Resources. Now in the next slide, we're gonna have a look at their quarterly cash receipts in operating cash flow. So we can just see what's been happening through time. But if you compare this year to last year, things are going well for this company. Receipts climbed by $43 million from $131 million to $175 million. And the company was operating cash flow positive, $24.6 million this half year, increasing from $11.2 million one year ago. There was something interesting in investing activities. They did pay $24.8 million in the payments for security guarantees. The majority of that was environmental guarantees. I'm not exactly sure what they are, whether that is a one-off or if it's going to be a continual payment in the future. But that did put a little bit of a damper on these results because in investing activities, they did spend $35.4 million, which means the company was not free cash flow positive. The other thing is a lot of stuff happening in their financing activities. They repaid some borrowings to the tune of $42 million. Proceeds and share issues, $116.7 million, but overall, cash inflow from financing activities was $61 million. So combined, when you take into account operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities, cash on hand for this company grew from $35.7 million to $86 million. They also have $12 million of debt, so enterprise value with a market cap of $200 and 56 million at share price of $1.96 is around $180 million. One thing I've been doing with New Century Resources is tracking their quarter receipts and operating cash flow over the past three years, ever since the December quarter 2018. So we have three years of history here. And the main thing is we are seeing quarterly receipts increase through time. And that's exactly what I want to see with any sort of company. I want to see receipts, I want to see revenue growing through time. Now, it doesn't mean that's going to continue in the future, but over the last three years, it's definitely been happening. And the most important thing with New Century Resources, if you go back from uh, the December quarter 2018 to the June quarter 2020, this company was operating cash flow negative by a high amount as well, a couple of these quarters. In fact, $30 million of operating cash flow negativeness in the September quarter 2019, all the way through to the March quarter 2020. 
but this company has transitioned from being operating cash flow negative to being operating cash flow positive. And in fact, the June and September quarter of 2020, they were operating cash flow positive by over $20 million. Probably the biggest negative thing about New Century Resources right now is the share price action and just the overall sentiment around this company. No upward trend in the share price. In fact, the share price right now is in the medium term downtrend. It moved into that downtrend in late August, or actually late July, early August of last year. Share price at that point was around $3. In fact, it wasn't $3 because this company did do a consolidation. I'm not exactly sure what the consolidation was. It could have been a one for 10 or 15, something like that. Anyway, the main thing is the share price has been fallen, falling since about August of last year, has moved from about $3, a post-consolidation share price, all the way to a current share price of about $1.96. I just had a quick look at the share price now. It's fallen a further 3% towards about $1.86. So right now, negative same in the share price, trend down, uh, and I one of my rules is don't buy into a company when there's negative sentiment and the share price is in a downtrend. So at this point in time, I'll leave New Century Resources on my watch list and wait to see if sentiment shifts and the share price moves into an uptrend. That's all I have for this video on three interesting small uh, operating cash flow positive miners on the ASX part six in this series. If you have any questions about Suvo, um, Otto Energy and New Century Resources, just leave it in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a great day. Bye.